Hello friends, chemistry paper one, multiple choice, 8th November 2018. Let's go all science on this paper. 50 70, but hey, chemistry is chemistry. Let's solve this. Question one, which of the following gases, gaseous molecules would diffuse faster in a vacuum? You look at the mass. Therefore, the one with the lowest mass is ammonia. So the answer is C. Number two, water was stored in a deep freezer until it turned into ice. What basic unit of matter are found in ice? The answer is molecules. Okay, although in ice, uh, the hydrogen bonds in water tend to extend. Therefore, they tend to make or cause water molecules to space out. And this spacing out causes ice to have a much lower density than liquid water, but the basic particles are molecules. Question 3. Um, the apparatus below was used to measure the volume of a liquid. Identify the apparatus and the volume of the liquid. You simply have to look at the lower meniscus when reading the volume. Therefore, the lower meniscus is this, not the upper one, the edge, but this one, which is 30. And this is a measuring cylinder. My answer there was C, I mean D. D. So D was the answer for this one. Number four, Elena does a chromatography experiment to identify the components of W, a sample of ink containing a mixture of colored dyes. The chromatogram below contains a sample of W as well as individual dyes, which are labeled 1, 2, 3, and 4. Therefore, that's our chromatogram. I'll just shift the camera to this side. Uh, substance W contains my answer was dye one in an unknown dye that sounds like dying okay so dye one yes is there dye one is present then this unknown stranger here there's no other dye so this is an unknown one so our answer there was a allow me to just push this paper down here um, number five which of the following gets sets contain the same number of electrons don't be i was almost getting confused with this question because i was busy thinking of mass but think of the atomic number okay and keep on counting sodium the atomic number should be 11 but since there's a charge this is 10. magnesium atomic number is 12 so if it loses two electrons it comes back to 10. fluorine it's nine therefore there's a negative charge here meaning it has gained an extra electron meaning it's 10. oxygen is eight since it has a negative charge, it means it gained two more electrons, meaning that the number of electrons is 10. So my answer there was B. Number six, the following dot and cross structures represent a molecule made of three different elements, L, M, and N, showing the outermost shell electrons only. Which set represents the correct identities of L, M, and N? My answer there was C. Okay, C. So... L, my L was fluorine. Fluorine has got how many electrons in the outermost shell? Nine. So this was, I mean, uh, it has got um, seven. Okay, that's why it's in group seven. Okay, atomic number is, uh, yeah, is nine, but it has got seven. Uh, so this was my fluorine. Fluorine is more appropriate for this, um, showing only the outermost shell. Uh, number B here, this has got one, two, three, four. My answer was carbon. Okay, I could have gone for chlorine here, but silicon, okay, silicon has got four in the outermost shell. So my, my perfect one was carbon. You have to use the periodic table, in other words. Final one is nitrogen, and the name is VIN A. Nitrogen has got uh, five electrons in the outermost shell. So three X's plus this two gives you five, and eventually this C makes sense here. You can pause the video and do your counting if you like. Number seven. Uh, an element has an atom uh, an element has an atom with the following nuclide symbols 28 14 the number of neutrons in one atom of this element is do your subtractions now my answer there is 14 28 minus 14 is 14 b 8 when 127 grams of copper combined with oxygen 143 grams of oxide is formed what is the empirical formula for this oxide I uh, to do my more ratios, therefore finally coming up with uh, the number of moles of um, copper, number of moles of this oxygen, I uh, had to do some mathematics, therefore my final answer comes out as copper 1 oxide. Okay, my answer is A. This is copper 2, okay, that's copper 1. So how, what do, how, how do you go about this? Divide this by the atomic number of copper, then find the mass of oxygen by divide by subtracting 127 from this much then that mass that you find divide by the atomic number of oxygen then uh, eventually find the number of moles of oxygen and number of moles of copper then divide by the smallest 
um, number of moles between the two. Then round them off to the nearest whole numbers. Then the answer you get will be A, copper 1 oxide. Question 9. The formula of copper 2 sulfate is that what is the percentage of sulfur in the compound? Find the total mass. Then find the mass of sulfur, which is 32. Then um, divide by the total mass, then multiply by 100. My answer is 30. Therefore, you're going to say sulfur over mass of copper 2 sulfate times 100. What is the mass of sulfur? Okay, sulfur is S. The mass of sulfur over the mass of the whole species times 100 gives you 20. Number 10, 2.5 grams of impure copper 2 oxide reacted with 200 mils of 0.125 molar sulfuric acid. What is the percentage purity of the copper 2 oxide? So here I did a little bit of calculations. My answer was 80%. Therefore, I wrote my equation. This is copper 2 oxide, which is copper 2 oxide plus sulfuric acid gives me copper, sulf copper 2 sulfate in water. So um, I needed to find the... Uh, let me go through the question again. 2.5 grams of copper 2 oxide reacted with this acid. What is the percentage purity of this? Okay. And um, I needed to find the limiting reagent. Okay. I needed to find the the mass of uh, of, uh, of of acid. Okay. In the acid, therefore, the mass of acid in the acid uh, that I that I realized was um, uh, two grams. Okay. From these two grams, this is the mass of acid that is going to react with the, with the copper. Okay. And this will give me the 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 what? The, the this will be my limiting reagent. Therefore, I needed to find how much copper had reacted with these two grams. And then from there on now, I... Okay, so uh, that's that. This was the number of moles of acid, meaning that this was also the number of moles of copper because the ratio is 1 to 1 here. So this is the number of moles of acid. This is the number of moles of copper. So converting this to mass in terms of copper will simply be, be, be that. So... Uh, mass is equals to number of moles times molar mass. Molar mass of what? Copper 2 oxide. My molar mass for copper 2 oxide came out as uh, uh, 80. Okay, 80. Copper is 64. Then oxygen, that's uh, 16. Okay, that's 16, giving me 80. So this was my mass of copper 2 oxide that reacted with this acid. Uh, therefore, the pure mass over impure giving me 80%. You can pause the movie and even uh, check out a little bit more if you're not so clear. Number 11. Tetraborate is a polyatomic radical and the formula of sodium tetraborate is that one. What is the number of atoms in a formula for aluminium tetraborate? You have to look at the valences of this species. It means the borate ion has a valency of 2. That's why it had 2 uh, sodium atoms bonded to it. But aluminium has a valency of 3. So this would be the formula for uh, if you were to replace the sodium with aluminium. Okay, so my formula would be this. And then you count all of these atoms here. The answer comes out as 35. 12. Graphite is often used in the electro as an electrode in the electrolysis of solutions. What, which particles are involved in the conduction of electricity in graphite? Graphite has got three electrons, so my answer is electrons only. At 13, aqueous copper to sulfate is electrolyzed using copper electrodes. The current is constant and the anode is positive. Okay, the anode is weighed as at regular intervals. Current constant anode weight at regular intervals. Which graph is obtained when the mass of the anode is plotted against time? Okay, aqueous copper to sulfate is, is electrolyzed using copper electrodes. Since they are copper electrodes, they are active. Okay, because the, the electrolyte is also having copper. So they are referred to as active uh, electrodes. Okay, so current is constant and the anode, anode is a positive terminal, therefore it's the one that is going to be getting dissolved. Its mass will reduce, okay, to reduce uh, proportionally, directly proportional to the amount of electricity that would be passed through the electrolyte. So my answer here was B, its mass will go down uh, in, a, in, a, in a constant way, okay. We come to 14. Um, the relative atomic mass of Q is 208. It looks like lead, which, or maybe when an elect when a current of 0.5 amps was passed through a fused bromide through a fused bromide of Q for 15 for 16 minutes, five seconds, 0.26 grams of Q was deposited at the cathode. Okay, 
um, this is a metal if it has to be deposited at the cathode because the cathode here is negative. Deduce the formula of Q ion for the sulfate of and and for the sulfate of Q. So since this, this is fused, it means it was just melted, not dissolved. It was it's molten. So my answer here is C. Q to the power four. I mean not to the power four. Q with a charge of positive four, and that would be the the formula because the sulfate ion has got a charge of minus two, so you need two of them. How did I arrive at four? I had to find the charge that was passed through. This is Faraday's first law. Therefore, the charge that was passed through in this time was four eighty two point five coulombs. Okay, converted the time to seconds. Therefore, this gave me ninety ninety six five nine hundred nine hundred and sixty five seconds. This is the charge, in other words. Coming to Faraday's constant, one more of electrons requires 96,500 coulombs to be discharged, or maybe to be transferred. Therefore, x moles, when I cross multiply this, it gives me this number of moles. So if this is the mass of the Q that was deposited, there's this direct relationship, direct, um, yeah, direct relationship or directly proportional aspect of it. So I convert the mass of, the, of Q to moles, then I divide this number of electrons by the atoms of Q for me to know how many electrons each atom required for it to be discharged. Then the answer comes out as 4, meaning each atom in this 0.26 grams required 4 electrons for it, to be, for it to be discharged and for it to be converted to a metal, for it to be deposited at the cathode. Therefore, the charge is 4 on each atom. Therefore, there's only one here which has a 4. Number five, number 15, concentrated sodium chloride uh, solution, therefore brine is electrolyzed using apparatus shown below. Okay, that's uh, our electrode is platinum, uh, carbon. Which of the following currently uh, represents PQ and the pH of the solution? Uh, here, if we just check out this, um, the, my answer here is B, hydrogen gas is at P, therefore the platinum there, then chlor um, chlorine gas, here, there, remember, sodium chloride, then the pH will increase if it will become basic. The hydrogen comes from water, leaving a lot of hydroxide ions in solution. Then the, the, the chlorine comes from the, um, from, the, from, the what? from the sodium chloride. Therefore, because a lot of, uh, um, uh, what? A lot of uh, hydroxide ions are, are being left in solution, it causes the pH to rise, therefore to become more basic. The answer there is B. The diagram shows an application of electrolysis in industry. That's our spoon right there. That's a co copper rod. Okay, copper rod above. The above application is best known as electroplating. Okay, electroplating. Whereby you use electricity to deposit a layer of uh, a, 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 the metal you'd want on another substance. This is done so much in necklaces. You buy a necklace, you think it's gold. After two months, you realize it's all faded. You buy a golden ring, but when you put it on a magnet, it sticks like crazy. Okay, so the answer there is C. Number 17, in which circuit does the bulb light? My answer there was D. Analysis, this is a copper, copper, um, aqueous copper to sulfate. Okay, uh, remember, these, these are the same, the metals are of the same reactivity. None of the two displace, it's the same in the solution. So this won't dissolve to go anywhere. There won't be any net movement of electrons. Number B, solid sodium chloride, it's solid. So it's not really um, an electrolyte that can allow electricity to pass through, so it's disqualified. Here you're having uh, zinc, then copper, then ethanol. Ethanol doesn't really conduct electricity. Okay, it doesn't conduct electricity, so it's not, it's not really, I would say it's not a good electrolyte. It may conduct poorly, but the fact that I've said ethanol, it's not really something you can use for this kind of experiment and expect light up there. This one, dilute sulfuric acid, it has, it's ionic in nature, aqueous of course, dilute, meaning it has got water. These two metals are of different reactivity, therefore, one has to dissolve, but again, as one dissolves, it will simply be converted to ions, and then electrons will have to flow through the wire and come to the other side and bring about another effect. My answer there is D. Question 18, study the energy profile diagram below. When you look at that diagram, the reactants are on a lower energy level and the products are here. Therefore, the energy level that the products are at is 40. The difference is 20. The, this is an endothermic reaction and the reactants have got higher energy content than the product. Than, I mean, the products have got higher energy content than the reactants. What is the value of the enthalpy change for the reaction? 
the enthalpy change is a positive 20 because the system absorbed energy that's why its energy level finally is higher there in the products b 19 which statement is correct for all exothermic reactions my answer was c the products of the reactions have got less energy than the reactants exothermic energy is lost therefore the system has got this any negative energy uh, value because it is lost so the products formed have got the lower energy uh, content than the reactant c number 20 the equilibrium below the equation below illustrates a reversible reaction that has attained chemical equilibrium look at this clue here enthalpy is negative which change would favor the product of pq3 this product here uh favoring pq you have to increase temperature you have to increase temperature because uh uh just a moment Okay, I was almost crashing there. I was almost saying the answer is C, an increase in temperature. But check out this clue here, negative enthalpy, meaning this reaction is exothermic. So for an exothermic reaction, you don't have to increase the temperature. You don't have to pump in temperature because it will be unable to release the energy that it is releasing. Therefore, it will, you will slow it down. You will suffocate it like of a better term. But if you reduce temperature, you're going to increase the temperature gradient between the reaction system and the environment. Therefore, it will lose temperature heat or energy uh, as, as much as it can therefore you promote the forward reaction my answer there the best answer is a number 21 apparatus shown can be used uh, to find the rate of a of some chemical reactions there's a syringe here meaning there's some gas that is about to be involved and the only reaction here which involves production of a gas is b magnesium reacting with acid to give you magnesium chloride and hydrogen gas my answer there was b 22 which one of the following pairs can have both reducing and oxidizing agents my answer there was d but check this one out i don't know why but i i i i i, I landed on d you can check this one out make it an assignment okay hey uh, yeah yeah yes 23 what is observed during the electrolysis of aqua scopa to surface during carbon electrodes the color of the solution fades because um, the, the the carbon electrodes will not really take part so as the copper ions are, are, are discharged they're the ones that cause the blue color in the solution so as they reduce in concentration the color fades 24 which of the following oxide is soluble in water calcium oxide it dissolves to give you calcium hydroxide number 25 um which equation correctly represents the reaction between dilute hydrochloric acid and sodium solid sodium carbonate my answer there is b you have to know how to write equations check out those equations post the movie and you see why i've said it's b and number 26 in which equation is the underlying substance acting as a, an oxidizing agent an oxidizing agent is the one that gets reduced so my answer is b because chlorine becomes reduced from zero the charge of chlorine here as an element is zero but it's negative one meaning it has been reduced so the reducing uh the, the reduced agent is the oxidizing agent so my answer is b you can analyze that one as well 27 is an insoluble salt formed by precipitation led to chloride insoluble in cold water and slightly soluble in hot or warm water so my answer is b they're led to chloride Question 28. The diagram below shows part of the periodic table. The letters U, W, X, and Y represent symbols of the elements. Which letter represents the most metallic element? The metallic character on the periodic table increases as you move to the left and as you move downwards. The metallic character increases. Therefore, the most metallic metal here is X. My answer is C. 29. Sulfur and selenium are all this are in the same are all in the same group of the periodic table. Uh, from this, we would expect selenium to have compounds having the formula. Just imagine selenium to be sulfur. My answer is A. As you are thinking, imagine selenium to be sulfur. Okay. So my answer there is A. 30. Um, all of the following are physical properties of metals except the reducing ability. This is chemical. Okay. The rest are physical. C. 31. The metals RST. R, S, T, and U are dipped in anionic in ionic solutions as illustrated in the diagram below. Arrange the metals R, S, T, and U in order of increasing reactivity. My answer here was uh, U is the least reactive, then this one, this, and the most reactive is T. How did I discover that or how did I conclude? Uh, you have to look at uh, the metals and the solutions they are dipped in. A metal that is very reactive will displace a less reactive metal from its compounds or from its solutions so if no reaction happens like for example here ara 
you no reaction is taking place it means you is not more reactive than r meaning r is more reactive you has failed to, to dissolve you has failed to displace r from its compound okay so u is less reactive so you have to keep on checking that and you find that this will be your finding b uh, 32 which set of conditions is suitable for production of ammonia in the harbor process ion is the catalyst so here my answer is a 200 atmosphere ion catalyst for 50 degrees celsius ozone layer is important because it traps or uv radiation which may lead to skin cancer d is the answer for number 33 number 34 the ozone process is a commercial process used to prepare nitric acid name the catalyst used in this process platinum rhodium alloy d 35 is a preparation is a separation technique used to identify the products of protein hydrolysis chromatography my answer there was chromatography 36 which of the following artificial macro macromolecules has a structure that resembles that of a protein polyamides okay amide proteins are bound by amide linkages and so are polyamides okay we're now getting to the end of the paper an aqua solution of a compound of molecular formula that much reacts with sodium carbonate liberating carbon dioxide okay reacting with sodium carbonate a carbonate and then liberates carbon sodium of course it also forms a salt and also water okay acids react with uh, carbonates to liberate or to form uh, a salt water and uh, carbon dioxide look at these other elements did you learn about these elements like this one which one will react this is a functional group and that's a functional group which one would cause a reaction here look at this one my answer is c okay that's some um, uh, ethanoic acid okay ethanoic acid is the most appropriate here uh 38 which chemical elements are contained in carbohydrates fats and lipids you have to look at what is found in all the three d okay all the three number 39 which of the following would produce two isomeric alcohols which are when hydrated okay hydration reaction so d is my answer propene only two butene no because um uh, yeah, it do not really form isomers to just be the same compound. The last question is Elena names are now keen and ends with four in. Um, if the name is correct, what must be the minimum number of carbon atoms in this alkene? The answer is eight. Remember, you have to start counting from the end, which is closest to the double bond. So here, the only smallest molecule that would have this locant here for would be a molecule having eight carbon atoms okay so my answer here is four so this marks the end of this paper 5070 chemistry paper 1 2018 have a good study time